dead fish and difficulties breathing. Now, of course, just yesterday we learned that Harris County may be part of that saga. As I shared before, I and my team learned yesterday that firefighting water from East Palestine was going to be sent to Deer Park, which is one of the 34 cities in Harris County, for disposal. One thing that I, I want to share that I think the public should know is that I learned about this not from a regulatory agency, not from the company, but from a member of the press. And that's unacceptable. My goal tonight is not to create more worry than there already is. But I know that our community was taken aback by the news, just as I was. And I don't want to be sitting on information that is relevant to this very public, very concerning disaster that is still ongoing in Ohio. I also want folks to know there are many things we don't know that we should know. That doesn't mean that something is wrong, and I want to stress that point. That doesn't mean that something is wrong, but it's worth noting. My team and I have been working with authorities from across the county, from across the state, and from across the federal government to get answers on the situation. We've spoken with Texas Molecular, which is the waste disposal company that is receiving this water. We've spoken with several officials at the Department of Transportation, the Environmental Protection Agency, the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality, TCEQ, as well as with several experts, both from industry and environmental protection. I want to acknowledge, of course, Mayor Mutong Deer Park, my, my colleague Commissioner Adrian Garcia, and Congressman Jackson Lee, who's uh, in her role in the House's Homeland Security Committee, has been helping us run this down. The government officials have readily provided the information they have, but what we're learning is that they themselves don't seem to have the full information. I'm still not sure why. I'm not clear <coughs> on who has the full picture of what is happening here, and that is a problem. We've got several open questions, but I wanted to provide an update with what we do know so far. Part of what we know so far is there is something fundamentally broken with how these incidents are dealt with, at least with how information is communicated. If not even I, as the local executive and head of emergency management of a county larger than 25 states, have proper information about what is taking place, if I am not receiving that, how can I possibly do my job of keeping our community safe? I promised I'd keep the community informed, so here's what we've learned over the past 24 hours, and we have been on the phone nonstop. First of all, we heard the news yesterday that some contaminated firefighting water will be coming to Harris County. Today, in speaking with Texas Molecular, we learned that, in fact, some of the firefighting water is already here. According to Texas Molecular, <coughs> the water began arriving to Harris County, quote, last Wednesday-ish. That's what they told us. According to Texas Molecular, Harris County has received a half a million dollars. According to Texas Molecular, Harris County has received a half a million gallons of firefighting water and will be receiving up to one and a half million more gallons for around two million gallons total. Texas Molecular said they're getting around 30 trucks per day from East Palestine, Ohio. The company has assured us that they're storing the firefighting water, quote, in a way that removes the risk to water, groundwater, air emissions, and protects public health, that the water is well within their permits, capabilities, and experience in managing waters like these safely and in compliance. However, there are three major concerns. First, the concern about what exactly is being injected into the injection wells and what kind of chemical reactions there might be between the material coming in and the other material that's been injected nearby or that's at the surface. We as Harris County don't know right now, and our Pollution Control Department doesn't know, and our County Attorney's Office doesn't know the exact composition and dilution level of what is in the water. 
On this concern, we are in touch with Texas Molecular. They've assured us they will be providing a full list of chemicals in the water, and we've also requested the permits from the TCEQ, the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality. We've not yet received either, but we hope to receive that information soon. The second concern is about the human health from the transport and the health of the workers. We've learned from Texas Molecular that they're receiving the water from trucks. It's possible, I'm told by the experts, that the water is first transported by rail and then by truck for the last leg. The fact that we don't know, it may make no difference, okay? But we want to know, we need to know. That's why we're here, is to know these things on behalf of the community. And so I'm asking that question, and either way, we need to know what precautions are being taken as those materials are transported, be it by rail or be it by truck. What precautions are being taken at the side of the well? The last thing I want is for our community, or one of the many, many communities between Ohio and Harris County, Texas, to be the next place where there is an accident with materials from this derailment. On the second point of safety and transportation and worker safety, we're looking into any violations by this company in terms of a safety record with the TCQ and with OSHA. So far, good news is the record seems to be strong, but our, our, our um, departments are still looking into it. We're also reaching out to the Department of Transportation. We have reached out to see if there's anything they can do to ensure the transport is as safe as possible, and they promise to get back to us on that. Third, the concern about why this water is coming all the way to Texas. Look, I'm told there are about 200,000 oil and gas injection wells in the U.S. and many in Harris County, and we're all hearing this, right? It's normal for there to be these kinds of injection wells. But what I'm also told is there are very few wells that accept hazardous commercial waste. I'm told around 10. So yes, Harris County is one of the very few places that can store these materials. What that means is this isn't as routine as we're talking about a little bit, but it also means that perhaps it makes sense it's coming all the way over here. However, I'm told there's a facility in Romulus, Michigan, and there's one in Vickery, Ohio, that could also take these materials. Why are these materials not being taken somewhere closer? Is there something these jurisdictions know that we don't know? To be clear, there may be logistical reasons for all of this. There may be economic reasons. Perhaps Texas Molecular outbid the Michigan facility. It doesn't mean there's something nefarious going on, but we do need to know the answer to this question. So we're expecting an answer from the Department of Transportation, and we're working to reach out to Ohio EPA, which is actually a state entity. We learned from someone with the federal EPA that the Ohio EPA, the state entity, is contracting with companies to transport the wastewater disposal. The Ohio EPA, with contractors, we're told, identified Texas Molecular as a facility that could dispose of the wastewater. But Texas Molecular is just doing the disposal, they're not doing the transport. There's nothing right now to tell me, to tell us, there's going to be an accident in transport, that this is being done in such a way uh, that is not compatible with the well, that there's a nefarious reason why the water is coming here and not to a closer, closer site. But it is our job to do basic due diligence on that information. We're going to continue doing that work and we're continu going to continue keeping the public updated as we know more. Here's the thing. We all know, and maybe this is the elephant in the room, we all know we're the petrochemical capital of the world and we're proud of that. We know many of our jobs depend on that. All of us in some way are tied to the industry in our community, but that doesn't mean we don't deserve clean air and clean water and safety. We routinely store materials, sure, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't be informed. And it's a very real problem we didn't know about this sooner. It's a very real problem we were told yesterday the materials were coming only to learn today they've been here for a week. We need to find a way to ensure this doesn't happen again moving forward and that we get the information that our community deserves. I think this is a new moment in public consciousness for understanding how hazardous materials are dealt with. I hope that what happened in Ohio and what is happening now here opens the door for a change in protocol. I hope 
that all our regulatory agencies at the state level, at the federal level, that they see there needs to be a stronger posture on how we can hold private industry accountable in handling hazardous materials and how we keep the public safe and informed. So I'm going to leave it there and repeat my remarks in Spanish and then I'll answer any questions. Uh, quiero agradecer a todos por venir. Todos vimos con horror mientras los residentes de East Palestine, Ohio, enfrentaron una catástrofe ambiental. Además, les dijeron los, los oficiales que era seguro regresar a casa y llegaron a ver peces muertos y encontrar problemas respiratorios. Ahora estamos entendiendo que nuestro condado Harris también es parte de esa historia. Como compartí el día de ayer, ayer eh, nos dimos a, a entender, mi equipo y yo, que agua usada por bomberos para apagar el incendio en East Palestine iba a ser enviada a Deer Park, que es una de las 34 ciudades en el condado Harris, para desechar eh, de esa agua. Ahora, hay algo que quiero que sepa el público. Esto me lo dijo un miembro de la prensa. Esto no me lo dijo una agencia regulatoria ni tampoco la compañía. Eso no es aceptable. Mi meta el día de hoy no es crear más preocupación de la que ya hay, pero sé que todos nosotros, la comunidad y yo, todos vemos esto con preocupación y yo no quiero tener información que no estoy compartiendo con el público. Especialmente dado que esto tiene que ver con un desastre que aún continúa, que ha sido muy público y que ha sido muy preocupante. Quiero que todos sepan que hay varias cosas que aún no sabemos. Eso no significa que hay algún problema, pero es importante saber qué se sabe y qué no se sabe. Hemos estado trabajando con autoridades a través del condado, el estado y el gobierno federal. Hemos hablado con Texas Molecular, la compañía eh, que está encargada de disponer de esos, de desechar eh, esos, esos materiales. Hemos estado también en contacto con varios oficiales en el Departamento de Transporte Federal, la Agencia de Protección Ambiental, la Comisión de Calidad Ambiental de Texas, el TCEQ, y también varios expertos de la industria y la protección ambiental. Además de eso, eh, quiero darle las gracias al alcalde Mouton en Deer Park, mi colega Adrián García, la congresista Jackson Lee, eh, quien es miembro de la Comisión de Seguridad Nacional en la Cámara de Representantes y me está ayudando con esto. Los oficiales gubernamentales nos han dado la información que ellos tienen, pero lo que me estoy dado cu dando cuenta después de 24 horas de llamadas sin parar es que los oficiales en sí no tienen la información completa. No sé por qué. No, no es claro quién entiende la totalidad de lo que está sucediendo y eso es un problema. Ahora, hay varias preguntas, pero quiero eh, informar lo que sí sé ya. Primero, escuchamos ayer que el agua contaminada estaría llegando al condado Harris. Hoy, en conversaciones con la compañía con Texas Molecular, aprendimos que de hecho el agua ya ha llegado una porción bastante grande del agua ya ha llegado, que empezó a llegar alrededor del miércoles pasado, es lo que nos dijeron. De acuerdo a la compañía, el condado Harris ha recibido 500 mil galones del agua, el agua usada para apagar el incendio, y va a recibir hasta 1.5 millones más de galones de esa agua, o sea, alrededor de 2 millones en total. Dicen que estamos recibiendo alrededor de 30 camiones diarios de Ohio. La compañía nos ha asegurado que están almacenando el agua usada para apagar el incendio de una manera que elimina el riesgo, el, las aguas, el riesgo para las aguas subterráneas, para el agua, eh, para las emisiones atmosféricas que protege la salud pública, etcétera, que tienen todos los permisos, que tienen todas las capacidades. Aún con esa información tenemos tres preocupaciones. Primero, es qué exactamente se está inyectando en esos pozos de inyección. ¿Qué tipo de reacciones químicas puede haber entre los materiales que se están inyectando y los materiales en pozos vecinos y además lo que está en la superficie? ¿Cuál es exactamente la composición y dilución de los materiales en el agua? 
en cuanto a este tema estamos en contacto con la compañía, ellos nos han asegurado que nos, nos darán una lista completa de sustancias químicas en el agua, le hemos pedido también los permisos a la TCEQ, la agencia regulatoria estatal, no nos han enviado ninguno de los dos entidades la información, pero nos la han prometido, esperamos recibirla muy pronto. El segundo tema es la salud humana en cuanto al transporte, la salud de los trabajadores. Eh, nos ha explicado la compañía que están recibiendo el agua a través de camiones. Es posible que el agua primero sea transportada por tren y luego camión. El hecho de que no sabemos si son trenes, si son camiones, si son, eh, o, 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 si son trenes o si son ambos, realmente no marca una diferencia sustantiva, pero queremos saber y debemos saber. Para eso estamos aquí, en nuestro gobierno local, para saber estas cosas, para asegurarnos que todo esté bien. Entonces, quiero entender, les he pedido a ellos una explicación, si es que se está llegando, llegando el agua solo por camión o por tren y luego camión. De cualquier manera, se están tomando las precauciones adecuadas. Eh, ¿Qué precauciones se están tomando en el sitio del de pozo de inyección? Lo último que quiero es que ni nuestra comunidad, ni cualquiera de las muchas, muchísimas comunidades de Ohio, aquí al Harris County, que ninguna de esas comunidades sean el próximo sitio en el cual vemos un accidente con materiales de este descarrilamiento. El segundo punto de, de seguridad de transporte, de trabajadores, Estamos viendo qué violaciones pueda tener esta compañía con OSHA y con el TCEQ. Hasta ahora no, no vemos problemas, pero seguimos investigando. También estamos en contacto con el Departamento de Transporte Federal a ver si ellos nos pueden ayudar a asegurarnos que el transporte sea lo más seguro posible. Eh, han dicho que nos van a ayudar, también estamos en, pendientes de hablar con ellos más mañana. La última, eh, el último tema, ¿por qué se está trayendo esta agua de Ohio a Texas. Todos hemos escuchado ya en las noticias que hay, que esto es muy normal, que hay muchos pozos de inyección, que esto se, sucede en el condado Harris a toda hora. Lo que me explican los expertos es que hay alrededor de 200 mil pozos de inyección eh, de aguas contaminadas con residuos de petróleo y gas. Entonces, esa parte es normal. Pero en cuanto a, a pozos que aceptan residuos comerciales peligrosos, me dicen que hay alrededor de 10. Entonces, sí es nuestro condado un poco único y esta situación no es pues así de tanto común. Ya eso dicho, el condado Harris no es el único sitio donde se puede eh, enviar estos materiales. Entiendo que hay un sitio en Romulus, Michigan, que hay también una compañía en Vickery, en Ohio propio, que podría recibir estos materiales. Entonces, ¿por qué nos lo están enviando hasta aquí a Texas? ¿Hay algo que saben estas ciudades que nosotros no sabemos? Pueden haber, para ser muy claros, razones lógicas. Puede ser simplemente que, por, de punto de vista económico, tenía más sentido enviar los materiales aquí. Pero debemos entenderlo. En este tercer tema estamos esperando una respuesta por parte del Departamento de Transporte y estamos eh, contactando a Ohio EPA, es una agencia estatal. Nos ha explicado el gobierno federal que Ohio EPA es quien contrató a las compañías para transportar esta agua para desecho. Los contratistas con Ohio EPA nos dicen, fueron los que identificaron a Texas Molecular, la compañía de aquí de Harris County, para, para desechar esa, esa agua. Para ser muy claros, no hay nada hoy día que me diga que va a haber un accidente en transporte o con los trabajadores. Que los materiales vayan a tener una reacción negativa con lo que ya existe. Que hay alguna razón misteriosa por la cual llegaron los materiales aquí y no a Ohio ni a Michigan. Pero es nuestra diligencia de vida el tener esa información. Entonces, vamos a seguir haciendo eso. Eh, sabemos que somos una capital petroquímica del mundo, sabemos que nuestros trabajos dependen de eso, pero eso no significa que no merezcamos agua limpia, aire limpio, seguridad. Sabemos que se desechan aquí materiales, pero eso no significa que no nos deban mantener informados. Entonces, es un problema muy serio que no nos hayan informado de esto antes. Yo soy la directora de emergencias para el condado eh, más grande en Texas, mayor en población que 25 estados, eso es un tema serio, es un tema muy público, internacional, eh, y merecemos respuestas. 
Entonces espero que este sea un momento nuevo en la conciencia pública para entender cómo se desechan los materiales peligrosos, cómo se lidia con materiales peligrosos, que esto abra la puerta para, un, para cambios de protocolo. Espero que todas nuestras agencias regulatorias vean que hay una necesidad urgente para tomar, de tomar una postura más agresiva en cuanto a asegurarnos que tanto las compañías privadas estén siendo responsables y también asegurar que el público esté informado y que se proteja la seguridad pública. I'll take any questions. So that's that's uh, you know one thing that I wanna that I want to um, make sure is clear is there's not a statute, there's not a law that says that our office has to be made aware when there is hazardous uh, material. Now, is it okay for there to be an international disaster in Ohio that has an explosion of this magnitude? And for us to suddenly learn that those same materials have been arriving in our community for a week, driving through our community? I don't think so. And so that's why I think this is a wake-up call to say, look, what ought we, ought we to know? Um, because, uh, yeah, I mean, I, it doesn't look like any regulations necessarily were broken by the fact that nobody told us this, but it doesn't quite seem right. It doesn't quite seem right. Where do you think the notification should come from? I mean, that's part of what we're running down is ultimately who's responsible, right? Is, you know, the EPA seems to have part of the story, the TCEQ seems to have part of the story, the Ohio EPA, which is a, a state agency, seems to have part of the story. Um, so. That needs to be worked out, you know, that, that, that's, that they should have an answer. would be for Texas coalition uh, environmental quality to let us know but but that you know that's what that's what needs to be worked out that's what I hope this is going to call um, for action on and and look that's a best best case scenario right I'm still working on making sure that 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 the, whether it be the EPA or whoever is going to be responsible, um, make sure that these materials are transported um, with all due care and that, and that we be able to verify what exactly is in that water. Um, you know, I hear from some folks, well, there's only 10% the hazardous chemicals or 10% the volume that there was in the ITC fire. Well, I'm sorry, but that's not the gold standard we're trying to hold ourselves to. Um, so, you know, we're, we just... Uh, I think I really think that that what's happened in Ohio and what's happening here uh, should be a wake-up call on how these things uh, should be conveyed to the public and and what kind of uh, care should be taken. We received a lot. We receive a lot of this all the time. What's it to say? We would not have been, you know, the next East Palestine. What's there to say that 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 we are protected from something like that happening with the trucks that are coming? Does it mean something bad will happen? No. Uh, you know, I, I, I want to I want to have the information and I want to make sure that for us in particular as a community that is routinely faced with um, with petrochemicals and, and, and sometimes hazardous chemicals like these, uh, that there be adequate procedures. You mentioned that the water was already, already here. Uh, when did it get here? I'm told Wednesday-ish is what our, is what our, our industry uh, liaisons, at our Office of Emergency Management was told. Um, so, you know, midweek last week. So not, not yesterday, Wednesday, a week ago, Wednesday. Do you know how much of that water? Yeah, so, so what we were told is, um, and I mentioned it a second ago, it says we received around a half a million gallons so far and that they're looking at around two million gallons total. Um, and I'll tell you, you know, I spoke with Mayor Mouton yesterday. I spoke with, with my colleagues. I tried to reach out. Nobody was aware until today, midday, that finally it surfaced, that actually it's already here. Um, I don't think that's okay. Any other questions? The mayor of Deer Park has said he's confident it's being handled appropriately. Why do you not share that same confidence as you said he also just found out? Well, I mean, I, I don't know. As I said, I don't know that there's something that would suggest for sure something's going to go wrong. This company, what we're looking into, seems to have a strong record. We're still looking into the OSHA um, history. But, you know, 
that that part seems to be all right. We did just have this derailment. Uh, we have had very clearly a lack of communication on something very, very, very large. And and look, I think you can say these these injection wells uh, take place all the time. As I said, what I've learned from the experts is this this very kind is not so common. And and in any case, it's not every day that you have. Uh, the kind of situation that took place in East Palestine with then the, 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 the burning and the fish and the respiratory issues. And I mean, if you were calling that routine, I don't, I don't think we should be calling that routine. But I think, you know, in my conversations with the mayor, um, what we both see is this is a company that certainly has experience dealing with this. Um, and this is not, so to speak, a new procedure. So I, I can understand why he would say that. I think uh, I see it more as a wake-up call. Okay, I, I basically shared what I have. Um, so, you know, it's, there's not much else I can answer. As soon as we learn more information, we'll share it with the public. Thank you. for a great weekend. We're prepping to repeat brisket first place last year. <laughs> so first place. First team in 75 years as a rookie to win first place brisket. That was last year. And what was that like? It was amazing. An amazing experience. So we're setting up now. We've got our pit. We haven't fired up the pit yet, but we're getting ready.